In a text-based data file, each record occupies one line of the text file. This might be comma delimited, it might be tab delimited. In this case, I just have one field uh, in our record database, which is the flavor of various ice creams. And so what we're going to do on this is read this text file one line at a time and place each line or each item in this list box of our application. Let me run this. I'm going to choose to get the flavors and there is the data from that text file which is called flavors.txt and I have created some buttons to add new flavors. We'll add in chocolate chip cookie dough and rocky road. If I add in a blank line, that stops the loop that this message box or this input box is running in. And so it keeps prompting us to add more flavors, so we have to keep clicking that button each time. I can also select a flavor and remove it. And so having added flavors and removed flavors, I now want to save all these flavors back to that flavors.txt file. And that's what that button does. So that if I run this again, it will bring in those same flavors back. And so my data is persistent. Let's take a look at the code. Of course, to use a stream writer or stream reader object, we have to import system.io. Then for our get flavors button, I'm going to create a stream reader object named SR. I have a flavor or string variable named flavor. I'm going to open a link to our text file named flavors.txt and that again that file exists in the debug folder along with our executable for more debugging. I could have added a path to that file name if I wanted to have it located somewhere else. And in the next video we'll look at how to use open file dialogs and save file dialogs we can search our hard drive for various files. I'm going to clear any items in the list box and then I'm going to use a loop. And I'm looking at the peak method of my stream reader. I'm going to add in to uh, Princey's here since it is a method. The peak method looks at whether the file has reached the end of the file. So we're going to read this one line at a time, and I want to know if I've read the last line or not. If I have, sr.peak will equal a minus 1. That means it's reached the end of the file. But if it hasn't reached the end of the file, I want to read the next line. So we had the read to end method in our previous videos where we read the entire file from beginning to end and placed it in a text box or into a string variable. Here I'm just going to read one line at a time and place it into a string variable. And I'm going to add that string variable to our list box, the items of the list box. And we'll keep repeating that until we reach the end of the file and then we're going to close our document. Here's the code to add flavors into our list box. And I'm simply using a loop to keep adding flavors until they enter uh, an empty flavor or a blank flavor. That way I have to keep clicking the button to add multiple flavors. You can pause this video and, and take a closer look at this code. I've tried to comment it out so you can understand what's going on there. And here is the code to remove a flavor. We're going to make sure they selected a flavor before we try to remove it. And if they haven't, we're going to tell them that to first select a flavor. And then here is our button to save the modified flavors. If we want to write this data out, we need to create a streamwriter object. I named it SW. I have an integer called I, which we're going to use in a for loop. We're going to create our text file named flavors.txt. So if it already exists, it's going to overwrite it. And then I'm using an if loop to make sure the list box is not actually empty. If it's empty, then we're not going to write anything. But as long as it's not empty, 
We're then going to read through each item of that list box one at a time. And so I'm using a loop that goes from i to 0 to the items.count minus 1 of list flavors. And I do the minus 1 because, remember, counting begins counting with 1, but our index numbers start with 0. And then each time through the loop, we're going to take whatever that item is, and we're going to write it to our text file. And once we've gone through all the items of our list box, we're then going to close the file. Let's take a look at the same code in C Sharp. So here is that same project in C Sharp. So I'm going to retrieve the flavors from our text file. I'm going to add a new flavor. We'll add one more. And I'm going to enter a blank flavor to end that loop. And let's go ahead and we'll remove a flavor. And I'm going to save my flavors. I'm going to exit my program. Let's reload the application. And I'm going to get my flavors, and you'll see that the data has been persistent. It kept our new flavors and had deleted the apple pie flavor. Let's take a look at the code here in C Sharp. Of course, to use a stream reader or stream writer object, we've got to use our system.io class and create a reference to that. So I've added that in at the top of our code. And then here is our get flavors button. Uh, handling the click event. We're going to create a stream writer object named SR. I've got a string variable called flavor. We're going to open the link to our flavors.txt file, which exists in our debug folder. So it's in the same folder as our executable at this point. I'm going to clear the items in the list box. And then I'm going to use a loop looking at sr.peak method. The peak method returns whether or not there is characters remaining to the end of the file. If there's no characters remaining, it returns a minus 1. So as long as sr.peak does not equal minus 1, I know I've not reached the end of the file, and I'm then going to read the next line from our stream reader object. I'm going to place that in a variable called flavor, and I'm going to add flavor to our list box. And I'd set the sorted property list box to true, so it automatically inserts it alphabetically. We'll continue looping until it has read all of the data one line at a time from that text file, and then we'll close the file. Here is the procedure handling our click event for the add flavor button. And I'm doing this in a loop until they enter a blank flavor or keep the, the input box entry is blank. Remember, uh, the input box is not part of C Sharp, so we have to add it to our, add a reference to Visual Basic to our C Sharp project. And then we can use it as Microsoft.VisualBasic.Interaction.Input box. Um, as long as it's not blank, we're going to add the flavor into our list box. And once it is blank, then this loop stops executing. Here's the code to remove a flavor when we click on that button. And I'm simply looking to make sure that they actually selected an item in the list box. If they did, we'll remove it. And if they didn't, we're going to tell them that they have to first select a flavor to delete. You can pause the video if you need to examine those two uh, procedures a little more closely. Let's move on to the BTN save button and its click event. Here we want to write the file out back to our hard drive, and we're going to create a stream writer called SW. I've got a, an integer variable called I, and we're going to create that flavors.txt file. If it already exists, we're going to overwrite it. That's what create text does. And as long as our list box is not empty, if it is empty, we're not going to write anything out, but if it's not empty, then we're going to read through our list box one item at a time using a for loop. And each time through that loop, I'm going to write the next item to our stream writer object and out to that 
flavors.txt file. Once we've gone through all the items in our list box and written them to the file, we're going to close the file.